Go back, crap crow, and thank you so much for joining me on this edition of Dark Reflections. We are back. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these, and to be honest, this one is a long time coming. It's late, really late. Of course, you already know it if you clicked on it. Today, we're talking all things the brand new album from Casket Robbery, Rituals of Death. This is their second album, which was put out by Blast Beat and Nuclear Blast Records. And it was released on November 11th. So it's a little bit while ago. I'm a little bit late to this. I know that, but it, I had, I had to still make this video uh, because it just, I, I can't, I can't put the record down to be totally honest. Normally right now I would have a physical hard copy, but I mean, sadly I don't, but part of the reason for that is because the first round of pre-order or the first round of orders all sold out right almost when the album came out. I think they have another round up on their band camp now, either way, links in the description below. And I certainly will be getting a physical copy very, very soon. I'm very mad at myself. I haven't done that yet, but on to this record. It was recorded at Unintended Studios and Old House Dark Studios. The cover art was done by John Scott. Again, this is their second album, Rituals of Death. And Casket Robbery is um, uh, uh, Megan Orville Scheider. I believe that's how you say that. <laughs> if I fuck up, I'm sorry. On vocals, um, on guitar, Corey Scheider. On guitar, Troy Powell. On bass, Brian Bukowski. And drums, Eric Schultek. Uh, that is casket robbery on this album. I, they've been on the show before. Obviously they, uh, we've seen them live play a bunch of times. They were supposed to play. I told the story. Uh, they were supposed to play at Michigan metal fest this year. It got rained out a bit. However, they've still been playing shows. They've been up here in Michigan recently. Uh, they are, they are relentless. Um, I think I actually talked about that Michigan metal fest thing on, a. The previous reaction video I did for I think the last, the last I think it was a the most recent single leading up to Rituals of Death. We have been talking about this album technically for a while now. Before we knew it was all going to be an album, they've been releasing singles for quite a while, and we've been reacting to them and all that. And on top of all of that, on top of all of that, they were just announced to be on this huge tour. Just got announced starting in March. It's uh uh. Ignominious, which I think I'm still saying that wrong, but I'm sorry, guys. Uh, they've, of course, been on the show. Casket Robbery and our family that's currently right now over in France right today. As of today, I think they're in France. Our brothers in the convalescence announced the No Survivors Tour for March 2023. And I got to ask Keith, whoever does their routing, because I fucking love their routing, because for the last like two or three tours now, they start off in Michigan and end in Michigan. So I could see it twice at the beginning and at the end. And yeah, it's it's ignominious, casket robbery, and convalescence. But there are many, many, many more guests going to be along the dates, on all the different dates along the tour. Already, I think most of the bands, or all the bands for the uh, the, the final date at the uh, in Chesterfield at the Diesel Lounge, have been announced and there's like living dead girl. There's like, there's a whole bunch of other bands that we know and love, you know, and love if you've been following this show. So it, it's a very, very exciting, very exciting to see that tour get announced. And I cannot fucking wait to see casket robbery again, especially with this album. And there are some very specific reasons I'm specifically excited for this tour that we will get into. So without further ado, my friends, let's dive into rituals of death. The album kicks off with a pummeling gut punch of just relentless fucking brutality with the track Worm Food, which is one of the ones we reacted to before. It's a terrorizing and dizzying intro full of relentless assault. I can see an entire crowd chanting, save your breath, like right from the get go. And it is, but and that's far from the only chant worthy moment on the album. Immediately, it sets a tone of full on in your face assault, black and death core that is absolutely sure to break necks of metalheads across the country and the world now then we get to track two which is uh, which is don't forget the eyes which features keith from the convalescence why i'm excited to see them play together on this tour this track is beyond insane not only one of my favorite tracks on the album but one of my favorite tracks of all year we got keith from the convalescence and megan two of my favorite absolute favorite screaming vocalists 
uh, 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 going today, coming together on a track, and even I could not have predicted how good it would sound. It's like these two were meant to trade off vocals one day like they do on this track. As a fan, they did it in my absolute favorite way because metal is a little bit newer to the game when it comes to being heavy with features on albums from other bands and stuff. It's only been in the last 10 to 15 years that it's become a lot more prominent. And there are many different ways to have a guest on your track. You know, someone sing a verse or play a riff or maybe jump on the hook and, and that kind of just be it. But when it comes to metal vocalists, especially of this style, of the style that Keith and Megan do, I much prefer to hear them work together and build off each other throughout the track, as opposed to someone just having one verse. In Don't Forget the Eyes, it sounds like they are both in, in, in the gang vocals, which are masterfully wo woven throughout the verses. Also, both Keith and Megan have their own verses, but at different points in, in the track, they both come in in almost every verse, it seems like. So it's really a very well-done trade-off that constantly feels like it's building off of itself as well as building off of the opening track. And I cannot wait to see them together live next year and hopefully get to see this performance live. Death's Dance moves a bit differently than the first two tracks on the album. Not only does it feature the album's first orchestral music, we also hear Megan getting somehow a bit more demonic, as, as if that were even possible, with her vocals, doing some different style vocals for a couple lines. Also, the overall tone, I mean, it begins and ends as brutal and fast and heavy and hard as the first two tracks. However, it feels more straightforward death metal, a little bit more toned down, kind of just a, a love letter to death metal in a lot of ways, uh, especially in the middle section. It, you feel like you took a big drop off a roller coaster and it has a really haunting tone to it that leads back into the brutality, but also beautifully paves the way for the uh, orchestral outro. And I have to say, there was a, a moment in the track where uh, uh, Megan screams the word ritual. Rituals. I can't even do it. I'm sorry. A little under the weather right now, so my voice is a little hit if you hear that. But uh, it, it's, uh, yeah, when she says rituals, when I heard her scream that, I was like, God damn damn it, that sounds like Angela from Arch Enemy. And I love it. Get, it made the hair on my arms stand up. Like, it gave me goosebumps when I heard her scream it like that. It was amazing. Also, up to this point and throughout, like, the lyrics on this album are unfucking believable Death's Dance works in perfect combination with Postmortem. This is the first track on the album that we, uh, it starts off with a sample, which next time I talk to them, I'm going to have to ask them where some of these samples are from because I, I was not able to identify them right away. Um, and, and there's also this sound, this bone cracking sound effect. Yo, yo, that shit was crazy. Like what I, oh, like to, to, it literally sounds like you're hearing bones crack in a metal song. It was fucking outstanding i loved it i love this track in general this song would to me would be perfectly at home on a cannibal corpse or a black dahlia murder album the lyrics are a literal horror movie that make your stomach churn when you read them you feel like you're doing something wrong which is how i always felt when i would read the lyrics to cannibal or dahlia it's a fantastic down tempo Corey really gets to shine on this one uh with a really spectacular guitar solo and riffing just throughout the entire track uh it creates a really haunting and terrifying scene and ambience um and it ends on these really scary like clean lyrics that almost i'm, I'm pretty sure it's megan but it almost sounds like like a child saying them, which kind of like makes it even more creepy and this bell like ringing. Uh, this is a spectacular horror fu fueled death metal track. And, and that's what I love. Like I love just horror death metal and death metal is horror to begin with. It is the horror music, the, the horror genre of music, you know, like horror is for movies and death metal is that for music. And this just, I mean, it, it, it's spectacular. It, 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 it is that in every way and in everything, and it gives you everything that you would want from a track like that. The track Beautiful Death features our next vocal uh, feature. This track features Mary Zimmer from the YouTube channel Voice Hacks, which is awesome because that's a uh, YouTube channel that I've been following for at least over a year now. I found her probably a year, year and a half ago now. And I, I think she's a fantastic vocal 
coach and if you follow her videos she's great for 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 the screaming style of vocals um but this is this this track uh beautiful death it's an awesome intro with its riff it's it has another fantastic solo um and, and it's just these two great vocalists working together in tandem like when they go back and forth when they go back and forth which they do a lot on on this track it literally like the image that shot in my head was like a group of metalheads in an abandoned house summoning two screaming fucking demons doing battle. Like that's what it sounds like to me. It's fucking incredible. Mary Zimmer is fantastic. Um, and it's just really cool to hear how they like went back and forth and traded off all the lyrics on this one. Uh, they, they do a spectacular job on this track bone mother i won't spend much time on because we already did a full reaction video to the music video and stuff but it is one of my favorite tracks on the album some of the best drumming on the album uh the song feels like everything that they were kind of going for as a whole it has every ele element of everything we've heard so far on the album um, from the, the the storytelling and terrifying lyrics, incredible drums, guitar, bass, vocals, it, it kind of seems like th this is a good example of everything that they're going for coming together. Great track. The Hidden, The Hideous, another one that we actually have, again, did, I think we did a reaction for that one as well. Um, so again, won't spend a lot of time on it, but there's a moment in the song where there's chanting come out and play like that's going to be huge i cannot wait to see that live i love the really there's the, the, on this track we get some really haunting keys uh it almost reminds me of like almost like a danny elfman kind of feel kind of like progression a little bit at least that's what popped in my head um huge breakdown and by far one of the creepiest and one of my favorites on this album the hidden the hideous which also features a lyric video. And Bone Mother has an amazing, amazing music video, which we've talked about before, but it's it's one of my favorite music videos that I've seen in a long time with the stop motion kind of stuff. But Hidden the Hideous, be sure to check that one out. Next up, Old One. Very different off the rip. Like, it's still fast and pummeling, but a little bit slower tempo, feeling a lot more straight death metal uh, with moments of kind of a whirlwind. It has an amazing middle section and moves from death to kind of a more bouncy groove than back flawlessly. It's crushing in, in a straight, straight fucking beat-ass breakdown that, that I, I, I cannot wait to see. And finally, the, the, the two gut punches to close this out, Reanimate, which starts with another sample that I really want to ask them about. Um, this is a song that I love. It has some sort of electronic stuff happening, but it's intertwined brilliant, brilliantly with just uh, a constant feeling of like like falling. Like you constantly kind of feel like you're falling through, like, I don't know, maybe a hole to hell. Uh, incredible guitar work. Another good solo. This one also to me feels very horror film like. And then we get the closer uh, on the album, Return to the Sky, which does have. A lyric video to it um heavy on the blast beats but megan vo her vocals make them move brilliantly it feels really well uh, sorry it feels really well rounded like a part two to track one in some ways which rounds out the album perfectly like they did a great job at kind of capsuling it like putting it all in a capsule where you go through the different stages and and i think that uh return to the sky closes the album out in a brilliant brilliant way so unbelievable album top to bottom one of the best i've heard all year so far this album is all killer no filler uh this album takes you on a psychotic terrifying haunting dizzying journey into the underworld where you will chant bang your head break your neck and mosh in hell satan himself would raise his horns to this album the features are incredible. The drumming and the guitars and the bass are all next level. I love the way they work together to create a heavy, chest-pounding landscape of sound. I could see I could see this being looked at one day as a quintessential modern death metal album. I could absolutely see that happening one day for Casket Robbery. They sound hungry and ready for heavy metal world domination. And this shit 
is the mad notes, yo. Fucking mad notes. So there it is. There's a there's a quick reflect reflection for um our family over there in casket robbery. Love all of you to death. Um, and everybody be sure to check out Rituals of Death out. It came out November 11th. You can find it everywhere right now. Be sure to give it a spin. It is unbelievable and i have not been able to put it down ever since uh ever since it came out so everybody be sure to check out rituals of death casket robbery that's gonna do it for this edition of dark reflections check out casket robbery coming up on tour um early next year i'm sure they'll have uh that doesn't start till march i'm sure they'll have some dates in between now and then um, and hopefully we'll get them back on the show to talk more about this album in between now and then and the upcoming tour so Huge shout out to Casket Robbery for putting out an absolutely amazing sophomore album. This is this is a great one um, that I cannot recommend enough to all of you. So that's going to do it for Dark Reflections. I hope you all enjoyed this album as much as I did. As always, we'll be back again very, very soon with so much more. But until then, my friends, raise your fucking horns and bang your goddamn heads to some motherfucking Casket Robbery rituals of death. We love you all to death. Good night! Not in the dark!